Hey, how you doing? My name is Emilio, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about the iPhone, specifically iPhone security, and how to put things in place on your iPhone to help it become a little bit more invisible from the outside world. Uh, the iPhone can get tracked, people can monitor it, and there are things that you can be putting in place today on your iPhone to help prevent some of that. We're looking at security specifically, how to strengthen your iPhone security and also prevent it from being monitored as much as possible. Before we start talking about that, please remember as always, subscribe to my channel, Digital Bike Computing, clicking on the notification bell to be kept up to date with all of my video releases. Let's go through the video right now. So if you're watching this, you have an iPhone and you wanna know how to make it more secure, how to prevent uh, people, companies, service providers from monitoring, snooping, spying on your iPhone, and also some security measures that you can be putting in place to just make it more secure overall. We're now gonna cross over to my iPhone and log into the iPhone and then we're gonna go through each individual step. So here we are on our iPhone. Now you can do this on a uh, newer iPhone or an older iPhone. The very first one that we're gonna look at is how to adjust the location services. So essentially here on our iPhone, you've got the settings area, right? You've got the settings icon and this is the location where we of course can change a whole bunch of settings on your iPhone. So we're gonna be spending a lot of time on this video within this settings area because a lot of the changes that we're going to be doing and a lot of the security enhancements that we're going to be doing to limit tracking and secure your iPhone will all be done from within the settings area. So what are location services? Well, location services is essentially uh, applications that will be uh, tracking your location. Um, sometimes they, that's good, other times you may not want to do that. But within the settings area right here, we're gonna scroll down to privacy right here under battery, right in the middle of the screen. And within here, you'll see that location services currently is on. So let's just go into here. You'll see that from what it says is that location services uses GPS, Bluetooth and crowdsourced Wi-Fi hotspots and mobile tower locations to determine your approximate location. Now, of course, if you want your iPhone to know where you are and you want applications to know where you are, then you keep this on but it's not always a good thing. We don't want certain applications to know where you are. So you've got two options. You can either go app by app. So this is a list of every app that you've got on here uh, installed on your phone. And you can see right from the right of the app. So for example, 13 cabs, you see it says while using. So if I click on that first one and there are a few options, it'll say never ask next time while using the app and always. So do you want location access to always be on even if the app is not open? only while you're inside the app or never. So you've got a few options here. You can either say never, and then that application will never ever know your location, or you can go and actually disable location services altogether and turning the off up the top. Now this is completely optional, of, of course, because some applications you may want to know your location, right? So if, you, if you're going to a particular, let's say you're ordering a cab, you're ordering a taxi, uh, perhaps that, taxi company uses your location to know where you are. So if you turn location services off, then perhaps that cab won't be able to find you or, or perhaps you're, you're, you know, you've got a credit card application, you know, for logging into your bank. Um, and that bank, for example, uh, can use your location to let you know where the latest, uh, where, where the closest ATMs are, the latest tellers. Um, if you have that off, you won't be able to see that. So you can go app by app, turn off the ones that you know that you will no longer need or you can turn it off altogether by just clicking on the very top right hand corner here and you'll see that location services will be disabled for all apps. All right, so that's the first thing that you can do. The next option is to disable background app refresh. So like the previous one in our settings area right here, we're gonna go into general and then background app refresh, which is right there in the middle. And in here, you've got a list of all the applications that are doing something uh, while your perhaps while an application is not open. So essentially an application will go out to the internet and refresh itself uh, automatically. Uh, sometimes that is good, sometimes it's not good. Perhaps there is an update to the app. Perhaps that app needs to know where your current location is or there's other things, other information that your application is using. 
So again, very similar to the previous one, you may want to go here app by app and disable it. Because at the end of the day, you don't want applications to go and download content or upload content from your phone without you knowing. So you can go app by app from here, or you can go up to the very top and select background app refresh, which is currently on. And there's three options, off, so it turns it off altogether, only when it's on Wi-Fi or when it's on Wi-Fi and mobile data. The reason there's those two options is because uh, of data usage. Sometimes when you have a carrier, uh, you know, over mobile data, um, you may uh, not want to use that data that you've been given by that service provider. So you could only do it over Wi-Fi. But if you don't want it all together and make sure that your phone is uh, track proof essentially, or at least assist in that place, uh, just set that to off. Now a good recommendation is along with those two first ones, which were location services and background app refresh, they're of course directly related to applications that you've got on your phone. Uh, I generally would recommend keeping your iPhone as minimalistic as possible, all right? So don't install a whole bunch of apps, right? You'll see, I mean, I've got apps. I've got a lot of apps, um, but there are apps that I know that I want. There are apps that I actually will use. So try to keep your phone as clean as possible. Don't install apps that you don't need. So be weary of apps as well that you don't um, that you install, as some apps can track your iPhone data. That, that's something that's very, very important. Sometimes people will go and download apps and they'll install a whole bunch of apps. I'll go into the App Store, for example, and they're just gonna go and download a whole bunch of things just because it's cool. Let, let's just fill it up with all these applications. And a lot of the time when you're going and downloading an app, so let's say we go and look for a game, this game right here, there's a whole bunch of information in here around what that game uh, is going to do, right? Privacy policies, things of that nature that you accept essentially when you download an app, when you download a game. So don't install everything, especially if you're going to choose to leave location services on and background app refresh on for certain things. Uh, you wanna be aware of what applications you're installing onto your phone. So be very mindful of that, only install apps and try to keep your phone as clean as possible. The cleaner your phone is, the less apps are gonna be going out and exposing your data out to the internet, to the world, to other places. Now, something else that is fairly important is to be aware of what services on your phone are actually tracking your location and actually displaying information out to the world. The three big ones being uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and mobile data. There's also GPS, which is obviously tracking your location up with satellites and GPS. But we're gonna be focusing here on Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and mobile data. Uh, so when your phone is on Wi-Fi, when your phone is on Bluetooth, when your phone is using mobile data, it is uh, displaying your location uh, out to the world, okay? So if you don't need Wi-Fi, turn it off. If you don't need Bluetooth, turn it off. If you don't want mobile data, turn it off. With those services being on, you're exposing your data out to the internet. You're exposing your location and other information. So I've got Wi-Fi there, I'm connected to a Wi-Fi network. If you don't need Wi-Fi, go in and actually turn it off. Likewise with Bluetooth, if you're not using Bluetooth, go in and turn it off or only sync your Bluetooth to, to devices that are known. Uh, here's one consideration. If your Bluetooth is on, it's essentially discoverable to other devices that are scanning the Bluetooth range. And that's also true of Wi-Fi. So just be very mindful of when you want to use Bluetooth and when do you want to use uh, Wi-Fi because your phone essentially is open to be scanned by anybody. Then you've got your mobile. This is your mobile data. Uh, do you want mobile data to be on? Okay, this is obviously using um, uh, your, your, your cell towers, your mobile towers around the place. You have that on, it's gonna be tracking against that. So just be mindful of Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and mobile data. Turn them off if you don't need them. The next one revolves around your uh, internet browser. Now, in my case, I've got Safari, which is the default browser that is on our iPhone. Uh, of course, if you have a different version of uh, a different browser, you've got Google Chrome, for example, uh, then the steps are gonna be similar uh, to this, but we're gonna be focusing here on Safari itself. So the Safari uh, browser um, uses uh, features that are on your phone. So for example, the camera, it uses your microphone, it can get information around the stuff that you've got on your data. So you can actually adjust the settings on your Safari by going into settings right here and going into Safari, which is listed right there in the middle. And there's a few different things that you can do from within this Safari settings area. Um, you can do things such as Safari suggestions and turning them on. 
You've got autofill stuff, which sometimes is good. You know, if you wanna block pop-ups, blocking pop-ups generally is a good idea as well to keep your uh, iPhone secure. What we're gonna look at, there's a couple, privacy and security, right? Block all cookies, uh, are optional, right? Sometimes cookies need information from you, um, but blocking all cookies could be something that you could turn on. A few other things there is uh, around prevent cross-site tracking, which you'll see I've currently got on, and fraudulent website warning, turn it on as well. So when the website is dodgy, it may not be legitimate, um, and you wanna avoid tracking, look at turning those two options on as well. Down the bottom, you've got settings for websites. So these are certain things that the uh, browser can use uh, with uh, your permission, sometimes without your permission. So go into these and actually turn them off or change the settings. So for example, camera. Do you want the browser to be able to see your camera? And essentially, you know, if somebody hacks into your, your browser, for example, or via your browser, here's our camera. Camera access on all websites, ask, deny, or allow. You leave it allow, it's a bit of trouble there. I would never do that. Um, you can leave it as ask, or you can say deny, so that your camera will never be used via the browser. That's also true of microphone. Do you want your microphone to be deny as well? Okay, there are two different things that you can do. This is not so much from a tracking perspective. These ones would be for tracking, you know, site tracking and even the website warning because there could, could be vulnerabilities. But settings for website are specifically around the security of your phone. Something else that you can do within Safari itself is look at incognito mode or essentially creating a private web um, session. All right, so right here I'm in Google uh, and this is just a standard Google website. But if I click on the little bottom right corner to open up my tabs, you see that here in the bottom left, I've got private listed. If you select that, it essentially creates a separate session for your browser that is private and it's essentially incognito. So your, your traffic and data will not be captured. A couple things that are important as well within the, uh, this is the browser, the email, and just really a good practice in general that is good for your iPhone, but is also good just for any day uh, use of a computer system. You never click on a link that you don't know what it is. We don't wanna be installing malware uh, onto your onto your phone, right? There are things, things such as phishing, um, emails and SMSs that can come through, which we don't wanna be clicking on. So this is not only Safari, where you can sometimes get a pop-up of something that looks suspicious or a link that is, you go to a website and it's asking you to click on a link that you don't know where it goes. You receive an email that you don't know where it goes, don't click on it. You receive an SMS, an iMessage that looks suspicious, don't click on it because you can inadvertently install um, applications, malware, spyware, onto your phone, which is then tracking you, right? And we wanna to try to avoid that as much as possible. So only open up things that you know where they came from and where they're potentially going. My recommendation is if you want to be very mindful of um, your how you're using your phone is to use a VPN, right? So a VPN is, it stands for Virtual Private Network. Essentially, it encrypts your network connection, your iPhone connection out to the internet uh, so that the traffic is encrypted and can't be intercepted, all right? So for example, if you're connected to a public Wi-Fi hotspot, you're in a, you're in a McDonald's, you're in a Starbucks, um, your phone is essentially accessible on that network, all right? So you're, you're at McDonald's, you connect into the McDonald's Wi-Fi, you've now granted McDonald's, you've, like the McDonald's Wi-Fi has actually granted you a IP address, and it's allowed you to get access into the network to, to share the internet, right? Through through the McDonald's Wi-Fi hotspot. But what that's done is uh, the McDonald's Wi-Fi administrators potentially can see your phone now on their network. Now, of course, they've got guest networks and all this other sort of stuff, but this is true of any public Wi-Fi. You're in a hotel, you connect into the hotel's Wi-Fi, you have to be aware that that hotel's Wi-Fi administrator could potentially get access now to your phone. All right, they could see the data um, if they know if they know what they're doing, if they know how to hack in, right? So only connect to, firstly, only connect to public Wi-Fi hotspots that you trust and that you are aware of, you know, privacy policies that you may need to that you may need to accept. But if you want to be secure, connect to a VPN. So you can use a VPN essentially to hide your phone's data. Um, and it directs or routes the traffic through a secure tunnel, all right? You can do this again through the settings area right here, general, scroll down to where it says VPN. Now I currently don't, ha don't have any VPN services set up, but as I said, VPN essentially creates a secure tunnel for you so that even if you're on a public Wi-Fi, 
even if you're on your cell tower. You can create a VPN that is an encrypted connection and it secures your traffic, it secures your data. Now you will generally have to go and configure a new VPN connection, essentially establish a new VPN service. You can check in my links in my description. Uh, I've actually got a VPN service that I use all the time, which is excellent and is very, very cheap. And you can set that up. You pay essentially like a small little monthly fee that will give you a VPN connection, which you go into here and you add a VPN connection. You essentially create the type, you add the server IP and all the authentication, a username and password. And then that is a secure connection with a VPN service provider. So if you don't know where to find a VPN connection uh, or a service provider, use the one that's in my description, which is very good. And I can definitely trust that one um, or create your own one, VPN secures your connection better than if you don't have a VPN connection at all. One that is very easily overlooked is this trusted companion called Siri. Um, so I recommend limiting access to Siri. All right, here's the scary thing is Siri is always listening. You know, if you say, hey Siri, for example, I may have just triggered something on your phone like it has triggered right here on my phone. Siri is always listening. It's always on in the background. So that can be a bit scary. That means that there's something that's always listening, even though it hasn't been triggered by that command, it's sometimes always listening, even though you don't know. It. And this is also true of the Amazon and the Google suite of products. And it has already been acknowledged by, by Apple and Amazon, for example, um, that, so Amazon using the Alexa products, uh, that the conversations are actually being listened to by actual people, right? So Apple and Amazon and Google and those sort of people, they've got teams of people who focus on this, this um, smart systems, right? The, 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 the helpers, the Hey Siri, the Alexas, these sort of companies. They've actually got people who are staffed in their companies uh, to listen sometimes for learning purposes, to make the, uh, the AI smarter, to make Hey Siri smarter. So sometimes they do listen to conversations to see whether Siri or Alexa got it right. So I recommend use Siri sparingly, and sometimes I would even recommend turning it off altogether. So you can scroll down to Siri and search right here in the middle, and there's a few things in here. You've got listen for Hey Siri, which is turned on. So there's a few different things there that you may want to turn off. If you don't want Siri, turn it off. If you want to minimize tracking, if you want to minimize Siri listening to you, turn this off. Something else that is important, is looking at the Siri dictation history. Right here in the middle, we're gonna open this up. Delete Siri and dictation interactions currently associated with your iPhone from Apple servers. So here you go, here is Siri conversations, things that you have asked Siri, data that has been sampled, uh, sampled to help improve Siri. All right, so people are listening. I would recommend deleting it. Delete all your history, do that regularly, okay? Your request was received. So now it's gonna go and delete it. But even better, as I said, turn it off altogether if you don't need it. The next one we're gonna look at here is limiting ad tracking. So essentially, um, ads which you get on your phone, you get on your browser, you get all over the place, are getting smarter and smarter. And they are now starting to target you directly, right? So your, your history, um, your browsing history, you've, you've seen this within Facebook. I mean, we'll do another video in future around, around how to limit ad tracking on Facebook, but how common is it that you'll be on Facebook, you'll be searching for something, and then all of a sudden there'll, there'll be an ad pop up that is something similar to what you've just been searching for on a browser. And you go, how, how did it know that? How is the ad targeted to me? It's things like this. So you can actually go and turn limit tracking off or limited anyway. Go into settings again. We're gonna now scroll down to privacy right here in the middle. And from here, we're gonna scroll down to the very bottom Got a few things. A couple things that I like to do here. First one is analytics and improvement. This is not directly around advertising, but do you want to share your stats of your phone with Apple? Do you want to share the stats of your um, applications with Apple or with the developers? Do you want to improve Siri and dictation? Hey, this is what we looked at just before. Why don't you turn all this off? This is all information around your phone giving you information to people that you don't know about your phone, about your history, about your tracking, around your location, around how you use apps. Uh, look at turning those off, those three that are currently on, turn them off. Of course, if you're not using Siri, we looked at that before, that will be off anyway, but look at doing that. But go back to advertising. Down the bottom, you've got Apple advertising. 
in here, it says the Apple advertising platform does not track you. Yeah, okay. This, in my opinion, is a little bit of a gray area. There are two things in here. Down the very bottom, we've got personalized ads. If you have this on, turn it off. Turning off personalized ads will limit Apple's ability to deliver relevant ads to you. It will not reduce the number of ads you receive. So that's the first thing that I would do is turn that off. If personalized ads is on, when you select view ad tracking information, there will be a whole list of information in here. Now in my case, I don't have anything in here because I have opted to turn this off previously. But if yours is on and you go into here, it'll scare you when you see a list of all of this stuff that is now being personalized to you. All right, it's a little bit daunting when you see that. So in my case, it's now saying it'll be available in the next 24 hours because I only just turned it on for this demo. But look at that, you'll get a bit of a fright go back into here and then turn it off. Back here in our settings area, how about iCloud? Now iCloud is brilliant for certain things, but not so brilliant for other things. iCloud is good because you configure it with your new, you know, your new iPhone, your new Apple device, and it just keeps a whole bunch of information. It's a cloud-based storage area for all of your photos and for applications and things of that nature. Um, but iCloud stores a lot of stuff in there. It includes your data, your text message history. And iCloud also knows the location of where you are or your data. Uh, so that can be a little bit, um, you may not want that to happen, right? So what I would recommend, there's two things that you can do here. The first is you can look at uh, enabling multi-factor authentication. So if you're cautious around using iCloud and you still want it, I would recommend turning uh, multi-factor authentication on. That's the very first thing. So that when you log in to iCloud, it not only asks you for your password, but it'll also ask you to add a second form of authentication to prove that you are who you say that you are. iCloud is one of those services that gets hacked consistently, especially you know celebrities and people in power get their iClouds hacked all the time. And that can be prevented quite easily by turning multi-factor authentication on. You'll have your iCloud information, all right? So you've got your name, you perhaps got a photo of you and you can go into here. And here is where you control all of your iCloud information. We obviously wanna look at uh, two-factor authentication on if you want to continue using iCloud. So under here, you've got passwords and security. And right there in the center, you've got two-factor authentication. Okay, so your trusted device and phone numbers are used to verify your identity when signing in. So you've put in your telephone number, for example, and you turn two-factor authentication on. That ensures that your iCloud is a lot more secure than what it used to be. Of course, with your password at the very top, you've got change password. So if you've got a very easy password, turn that on. Of course, if we're concerned of uh, tracking altogether and we wanna secure our identity even further, down the very bottom of iCloud, if you, this is of course if you already have an iCloud set up, you can scroll into the very bottom and you've got sign out. Sign out of iCloud altogether. Don't use iCloud if you want to ensure the identity is kept secure. One that is also important is keeping your phone updated. Right, so Apple release updates uh, frequently uh, when they have discovered vulnerabilities or potential bugs. Okay, so sometimes people don't like to upgrade their phone because they'll think that newer updates could cause the phone to run slower or could you know, contain other updates that you don't want. And that to an extent is true because newer updates will over time make your phone run slower because they have new features. But at the same time, Apple release updates sometimes because there's been bugs or vulnerabilities or holes found within the iOS software. So going into the general area and software update ensures that your iPhone is always up to date. You'll see that my version is listed right there. Automatic updates, you can set this to on automatically. You see that I've got download and install updates on automatically. Now, if you don't wanna do this automatically, you can turn these off. Um, I would recommend in certain instances, you may wanna turn this off because you may wanna have a bit more control of what the update is. All right, so you don't just update just for the sake of it sometimes, you wanna actually review the release note. So when iPhone, when a Apple release a new iPhone update, they generally will give you an overview of what sort of things have been in included in that update. So you may wanna read that beforehand. So update your phone if it does have uh, bug fixes or vulnerabilities have been fixed. 
because the last thing that you want is for a very glaringly obvious vulnerability to have been discovered on an iPhone that potentially allows hackers, allows further tracking on your phone to be there. And by you not updating it, you still leave your phone open and vulnerable. Something that you could look at implementing is to auto wipe your iPhone, okay? So we wanna obviously protect our iPhone data. We wanna protect it from being tracked, from being hacked, from being stolen. So if within our settings area, we're gonna go back into face ID and passcodes. Down the very bottom, you've got a thing that says erase data. Erase all data on this phone after 10 failed passcode attempts. So let's say your phone has been stolen, it's been compromised. Um, they're now locked out of your phone. They've still got your phone or they're logged into your phone remotely. Now, the last thing that you want is for somebody or some sort of mechanism, because what you can do is you can actually have, um, if your phone gets taken or compromised, there is software that can be run on a phone to automatically try multiple combinations of pin codes uh, over days. Eventually, they'll be able to get in that way. So what you could do is you can say, erase all data on the phone after 10 failed attempts. So if I turn this on and I say enable, if I now try to put in the pin code 10 times wrong, the phone automatically erases. It's an awesome security feature and ensures that your data is kept secure and that your phone is not compromised. So that was a list, a number of pointers, a number of things that you could be putting in place. So I hope that some of those tips helped you out. Hopefully you've put some of these things in place to ensure that your iPhone is more secure and mitigating some of this monitoring that may take place on your iPhone from people that shouldn't be monitoring on your iPhone. I will make mention that there is no 100% foolproof way to make your iPhone 100% secure and make it preventable from tracking and monitoring, all right? At the end of the day, your iPhone needs to talk to some cell towers, to mobile towers around your area. You know, as you move from place to place in your city, your phone connects to new cell towers, right, all the time. So there's always a way that the cell tower companies know the exact location of your phone. The only way to get away from that and make sure that your iPhone is perfectly secure is to remove the SIM card from your phone, but more importantly, is make sure that you take the battery out of your phone. Hang on, I've got an iPhone, I can't remove my battery. That's true, you cannot remove your battery from your iPhone. So the only foolproof way is to let your iPhone completely drain of battery, take your SIM card out, and then you're generally gonna be okay. Of course, that is not a usable way of doing this, so we're gonna be covering some things that you can put in place to mitigate that. But the stuff that we talked about today will definitely help and hopefully it's given you some ideas and some tips that you can be putting in place. That's it for this video. As always, please remember to like, comment below, let me know your thoughts. Let me know if this was helpful to you. Uh, and please remember to subscribe to my channel, Digital by Computing, clicking on the notification bell to keep up to date with all of my video releases. It really helps me to also grow my channel and it also helps me to know that you are finding my videos helpful. Thank you so much for spending the time today. Really appreciate it. We will see you next time.